The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you could join us for another Word of Faith Netcast. The Word of Faith Netcast is designed to teach you the Word of God. And that's what we're going to be getting into today is a new topic, a new study from the Word. And it's a really interesting title to this study. The study is called, What Are You Thinking? (laughs) What are you thinking? You need to take stock of what it is that you're thinking about, meditating on, considering as you live your day-to-day life, just as you go about what you're doing day in and day out. What are you thinking? That's what we're going to be talking about. Before we do that, I want to make just a couple of announcements. First of all, as I'm sure you are aware if you've been watching the Word of Faith netcast for any length of time, our speakfaith.tv Roku channel is just going great guns. We've got a lot of folks that have signed up for it. If you have a Roku device, I encourage you to go to the channel store and look for speakfaith.tv. It is under the uh, religion and spirituality topic or heading, and you can go in there and find it, find the big red shield that says speakfaith.tv. I encourage you to check that out. And also, of course, our beta channel. Our beta channel is, uh, is really interesting because that is a channel where we have our (laughs) in-progress code And that includes speakers that uh, we are testing the feeds and yet have have not gotten full uh, uh, permission, if you will, to put them on the regular channel, Uh, but we're working with them. You can go and check out Speak Faith TV Beta channel by going to SFTV Beta as a private channel. Now, what you do is you go into your Roku account. One of the options there is to set up or to... uh, uh, to subscribe to a private channel and then when you see that you click on it and put in the code SF TV beta B E T A as it says here on the screen and then you can get in on our beta channel as well so I encourage you to check those things out they're great opportunities to hear from speakers that are preaching and teaching the uncompromising word of faith message hallelujah and of course those are the only ones we'd have on speakfaith.tv because that is the vision of that channel. Part of the vision of Word of Faith Ministries, as you know, to proclaim the Word of Faith, be a showcase of ministries, and then train people to fulfill the Word of God. Well, being a showcase of ministries, part of that is to showcase the ministries that are proclaiming the Word of Faith, teaching people to fulfill the Word of God, and that's what speakfaith.tv is all about. So I encourage you to check that out. Let's go into the Word now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you, the word beseech, of course, means to beg, I beg you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you uh, with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we're in a physical flesh and blood body, We do not war after the flesh. It is not our calling as Christians to war against the flesh or to fight against people in the natural. That's not what we're to do. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that is, they are not physical, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, what does it mean to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ? Well, we are to obey the Word of God. Now, I know a lot of people are teaching what I call greasy grace doctrine. Greasy grace doctrine says, oh, we live under grace. We can do anything we want. We can think anything we want. We can act any way we want to act. We can just sin and just enjoy sinning because all of it's been taken care of. We live under grace. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. 
It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we are to obey the Word of God. We're to live in obedience to the Word. And that's pleasing unto God. Well, you know, even let's put it this way. Even if you didn't have to be obedient to the Word of God, wouldn't you want to obey the Father God and live the way He wants us to live just because it pleases Him? I mean, you know, even if it wasn't a requirement, a commandment, and it is a commandment, and commandment is not an ugly word. We've talked about it before. The word commandment is not something bad. Oh, a commandment. We're living. You're trying to put us under the law, Dr. Bill. No, 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 no. Commandments are simply authoritative prescriptions. Remember the study we did a few months back about authoritative prescriptions? You go to the doctor and you... Uh, get diagnosed for a particular condition, he'll write out a prescription. That's an authoritative prescription. You take that to the drugstore, you get it uh, filled, get that prescription filled, you take the medicine, guess what? You start getting better. Well, was the prescription for your harm or was it for your good? <laughs> it was for your good, right? <clears throat> you got better because you took the medicine that you were supposed to take. Well, God has authoritative prescriptions. He wants you to live a certain way, not because he's mean and ugly, no. No, he wants you to live a certain way because it's good for you, because it'll bless you, because it'll be the best way for you to live and the most enjoyable way for you to live. If you live God's way, you will enjoy life. Oh, but Dr. Bell, I won't be able to carouse and drink and. No, you won't, but you'll be able to really enjoy life. You're talking about living unto the flesh. You're talking about living a carnal life. I'm telling you, living a life unto the Spirit, that is much better. Much more fulfilling, much more full of life and love and encouragement. Woo, I'm telling you, you need to live that kind of life. That's the life that we're called upon to live. And that's an authoritative prescription for your good. So, we need to bring thoughts into captivity to Christ. Now, when we say Christ, what does that mean to you? Well, if you've heard Brother Kenneth Copeland teach, you know that Christ is the anointed one in his anointing. We bring our thoughts captive to the anointed one and his anointing. Now, what does that say? That says, really, if you think about it, that if you bring those thoughts captive to the anointing, the anointing will increase in your life. The power of God will increase in your life. Think about this. A lot of you say, oh, I don't have any power in my Christian life. <clears throat> well, then what are you thinking? What is in your mind? What are you meditating on? Now, as I was teaching the, these scriptures one time, and I, I've told this story many, many times before, but I'll tell it again. Uh, as I was teaching these scriptures one time, and I was reading them in front of a congregation, the Lord said, read that backwards. <laughs> and I said, Lord, wait, what? <laughs> read it backwards? What do you mean read it backwards? Well, he didn't mean read each word backwards in the sentence. He meant of the three key words in these verses... Take those in reverse order. Now, what are the three key words? Let's look at it. Uh, let's see. They are, the weapons of, of, uh, of our warfare are not carnal, verse 4, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, that's our first key word. Casting down imaginations. That's our second key word. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought that's our third key word, to the obedience of Christ. So let's take it backwards. Thought, imagination, stronghold. And that's what the Lord was trying to get me to see. He said a thought, if you dwell on it long enough, will become an imagination. An imagination, if you think on it, meditate on it, <clears throat> turn it around in your mind enough, will turn into a stronghold. And then he showed me this example. He said, think of it this way. If you go outside and you see a little sprig sticking out of the ground, just a little green sprig, 
you reach down and pull that <laughs> it just comes right up out of the ground there's no root system there <clears throat> it's not deep into the ground right but if you see a, a, a little sapling a little tree maybe it's old an inch in diameter or so and you see and you try to pull that out of the ground ugh, man that's harder it's hard to do and then if you go out to a big old redwood tree that's you know like seven feet across at the base and you try to pull that out of the ground whoo you got you got problems <laughs> I don't care if you got an earth moving machine you're gonna have some problems pulling that out of the ground it's gonna have a big root structure those roots are gonna grow have grown in among rocks and oh my goodness it's gonna be hard to pull that out so you see the difference a thought an imagination a stronghold and that progression is involved in time think about that little sapling it starts growing over time it gets bigger goes deeper gets bigger roots go deeper you see what I'm saying it builds well it's the same thing with a thought a thought a fleeting thought see Satan fights against you in the realm of thought he has no power to just take you over okay he has no power to just overcome you now, you're a born-again believer but he still retains the ability to deceive I want you to think about this he retains the ability to deceive so what does he do he'll float a, a little thought by just a thought oh what if I did this and then you start meditating on that thought you start thinking about that thought you start turning it over in your mind and that thought left unto itself and left in your mind and turning it over in your mind will build and build and build and grow roots and grow deeper until it becomes a stronghold now it would help us to define our terms here what do we when we say imaginations when I tell you imaginations what, what do you think of well you think of things you imagine I'm gonna have this really great vacation I'm gonna go to the beach I'm gonna swim you know you think of those as imaginations well what are you doing when you are thinking of those imaginations you're imagining or you are reasoning you're thinking right the word here in the Greek for imagination, so logismo, means logically reasoning, thinking over and over in your mind, turning a thought around in your mind. You've done that before. A lot of people love to imagine. I was talking about vacation. They love to imagine themselves on vacation. Oh boy, I'm going to have such fun. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to swim. I'm going to you know put my toes in the sand and I'm gonna dig down into the sand and watch the water fill the hole you can see that in your mind's eye I'm gonna listen oh, I'm gonna listen to that surf it's so relaxing you, you think about those things you imagine those things and it becomes clear in your thinking right that's logismos in operation that's reasoning thinking turning it around in your mind that's what that is that's the process it doesn't necessarily have to be bad I mean thinking about vacation that's kind of fun <laughs> but if you take a thought that Satan has planted and you turn that over in your mind and you think about that and you let that dwell in your mind then it can become a stronghold what's a stronghold the Greek word here for stronghold means a fortified castle of arguments a fortified castle of arguments now what's a fortified castle of arguments there are people that have arguments against the Word of God for instance let's take uh, let's take evolution as an example and evolution is a theory it's simply a theory you know what a theory is that's just an idea that, that men have come up with to explain something and and it's a theory and it could be right it could be wrong I'm talking about theories all right could be right could be wrong you don't know there is no empirical evidence to demonstrate whether a theory is right or wrong unless it is put to the test I'm talking about scientific process here 
you put theories to the test and you try to determine, does this theory hold up? Well, the theory of evolution is a theory about how simple-celled creatures, being, you know, uh, animals, if you will, could continue to develop over time, millions and millions and millions of years, and come to be some other kind of creature. That's the theory. All right? There are people who believe that so strongly. See, it's, it's, it's gone from a rational reasoning uh, theory that they're just proposing and trying to find a way to prove to a belief, to a stronghold, where they won't let go of it. Well, at that point, it, it leaves the realm of theory in their mind and becomes a strong belief, becomes a fortified castle of arguments. And if you try to tell them, well, now, you know, okay, that's a theory, but there's also the theory, if you want to call it this, of creationism, that some higher being created everything, and, and let's talk about that theory. Oh, no, 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 no. I believe in evolution, and I'll not listen to you talk about creationism. Why not? It's, it's a theory like your theory. Let's discuss it. Let's have a rational discussion. No, I have a fortified castle of arguments for evolution, and I'm not going to talk about creationism. That's, that's stupid. Well, why is it stupid? I mean, it's another theory. Now, I'm talking about merely in the scientific, rational reasoning realm. It's simply a theory, right? Now, we know from the Word of God that God did create the heavens and the earth. We know that based on the, on the Word. I believe the Word. Amen. So, you know, I have a stronghold. I have a fortified castle of arguments concerning creationism because I have chosen to believe that, and I believe that, and therefore it is a stronghold in me. Now, in my case, I believe that's not a bad stronghold. Okay, that's a positive, that I have a belief system based in the Word of God. That's a good stronghold from my perspective, all right? But the, the person who believes in evolution, who's chosen that stronghold to be taken and, and have root in their mind, they're not going to listen to creation teaching. They're going to think, oh, I've, I've read people, man, I've read people online that just, if you even hint that you believe in creationism, they mark you off as terminally stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, they're just like, you can't possibly have any intellect whatsoever. And then you tell them, well, you know, look, I've got two doctorates. I've got a PhD in theology. I've got a, 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 a doctorate in naturopathy. Uh, I, it's not that I lack mental capability here. Let's discuss this. No, 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 no. You're stupid because you believe in creationism. They have you pegged. You see what I'm saying? Now, who's being unreasonable? I want you to think about that. Who is really being unreasonable? That person has such a stronghold, they won't even talk to you. They won't even have a rational, calm discussion about what is right, wrong, you know, what's provable or not provable, or whatever, whatever the scientific method it requires. They don't even want to talk about it. Why? Because they have a stronghold. Well, strongholds are hard to pull up just like that big old tree. They are hard to deal with. But if you deal with the thought before it becomes an imagination, and therefore before it becomes a stronghold, then you've got a better chance of dealing with it. So Satan, you see, he has the ability to see. He will bring a thought. Well, you need to bring that thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We're told through the Word of God what the obedience of Christ entails. And we need to stand on the Word. And we need to stand for what the Word says that we're to stand for. So you take those thoughts captive. Before they become logismos, before they become logical, rational reasoning that you turn over in your mind, you can take... Uh, now, you've heard this before, I'm sure. You can take anything statistically, make a statistical study, and take those statistics and twist them and just make it say anything you want it to say. 
You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, 2% of these people do this, that, and the other. And then you use that to prove, so to speak, that something is true. Particularly in the political season, <laughs> you will hear a lot of that. Does it make it true? No. They're using statistics to try to prove a point. They are trying to logically convince you that something is true, but their logic very often is flawed. Well, it still can sound good to the logical process, and people will buy into that and it will become a stronghold. Oh my, there's so many examples in the political realm you could use, I won't get into that, but my goodness, people are being convinced of things that are absolutely completely wrong through all kinds of manipulations and all kinds of reasonings and, and rationalizations. You know what a rationalization is. I'm just going to keep explaining it to you and throwing enough facts and figures and statistics and, until I can rationalize to you why this is true, but there's really no truth in it. you got to watch that kind of thing because people will twist things to try to get you to believe something that's simply not true. That's that process of logismos. Now again, it can be used for positive ways and means, and that is to take the Word of God, put it in your mind, turn it over in your mind, meditate on it, murmur it out of your mouth. You take a thought by saying it, according to the Word of God. So you, you, speak, you speak it, you think about it, you turn it over in your mind, it becomes a stronghold, a fortified castle of arguments for good. In other words, the Word of God is true. Healing is for us today. The power of God is still available. God wants you to prosper. All of these things can become strongholds in you. Those are good strongholds. So this process can be used for good or it can be used for evil. You see what I'm saying? It can be used for good if we're building the Word of God into our mind. You remember what Romans chapter 12 said? Romans chapter 12 uh, well, let's just go there. Hallelujah. Hadn't planned to, but we're going to do it. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world system. That's what we're talking about. Here's the world system. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You renew your mind, and that will transform you. Rather than being conformed to the world system, you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, what is the will of God? God's will is His Word. What we see in the Word of God is the will of God. Uh, meditate on that a second. What we see in the Word of God is the will of God. So, what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God? His Word. What do we meditate on? His Word. What do we put in, build into our, our spirit, build into our mind? What do we renew our mind with? The Word of God. And by doing that, we will be transformed. That word transformed is the Greek word metamorpho, which means to be metamorphosized, to be changed from one thing into another. What we're being changed from is the world's way of thinking to God's way of thinking. From the world's system, that Babylonian system of the world, to God's system. God's system is based on blessing. God's system is based on love. God's system is based on faith. Hallelujah. That system is the better way to live. I'm telling you. It's the better way to live. And that's what you need to be renewing your mind to. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Are you thinking on the Word? Are you thinking the thoughts that are obedient to the Anointed One and His anointing? Are you thinking thoughts that are in line with what God wants you to think? What the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to think? Are you thinking along the lines of the world? Are you thinking along the lines of what the world wants you to think? You need to choose. Amen. The Word of God says very plainly we're to choose life. I put before you this day a choice. 
Life, death, blessing, cursing, choose life. Well, you need to choose to think the thoughts of God from his word. You need to choose to think what Jesus wants you to think. There used to be a, a little thing, you know, that people wore on their, uh, their arm that said, what would Jesus do? WWJD. And it was to remind them, what would Jesus do? Well, I want to make that a little stronger. What would Jesus think? What would he think? Let's think the thoughts of Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. Remember, the Word of God says, you have the mind of Christ. Well, if we have his mind, we can think with it. We need to meditate on what he would want us to meditate on. Think about what he wants us to think about. What are you thinking? You need to think in line with the Word of God. And if you'll do that, it will be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. Well, we're just about out of time. I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. One, sign up for our speakfaith.tv Roku channel. Get yourself a Roku box. If you haven't already, you can go to our website, wofm.org. There's a banner there at the bottom right-hand corner of the site. If you'll click on that, you can get a Roku box very inexpensively. I mean, probably less than taking your family out to supper one night. Just, you know, and, and that the, the money for buying that Roku box does not come to me. That is just for you to get the device you need. Get that Roku, hook it up to your TV, sign up for a Roku account, that's free once you do that, and then subscribe to speakfaith.tv. It will be a blessing to you and your family. So I encourage you to do that. Second thing, Word of Faith Radio, WFR, dot org word of faith radio you need to listen to the word on a consistent daily basis that's part of how you think these thoughts we're talking about what are you thinking think on the word of god meditate on the word of god listen to the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so you it's important to you to listen to the word of god on a regular consistent basis and word of faith radio w o f r.org is a great resource for that. Also, I'd love for you to write us here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. Our zip code 27262. I appreciate those of you that have written and have been contributing to the ministry. You are such a blessing. Believe me, I appreciate your partnership and your help in this ministry and we have partners all around the world you say dr bill you really have partners all around the world i'm speaking by faith there are partners all around the world and more and more is coming in all the time to help us do what god has called us to do here at word of faith ministries hallelujah join us again next time remember until then to fulfill the word of god The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.